Let's talk Phillies with the wild thing. Mitch Williams, welcome to Philly Press Box Radio. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you having me. Hey, uh, Mitch, speaking of the World Series, I, I heard you, you know, you've heard the story a million times, so we're not going to go over all that again. But I heard you say something uh, about a month ago, I guess it was, when the Flyers were just going to Toronto for the bubble. You were on WIP, and I, I was listening, and I heard you say, uh, well, if the Flyers need anything up there, just drop my name, and uh, they'll be well taken care of in Toronto. They don't uh, have I limos. Uh, I got a laugh out of that. You, you've adjusted well to, uh, I mean, it's life. It happens, and, you know, you've adjusted well after uh, the Philly fans weren't quite so kind to you. The Philly fans have always been great to me. I, the people that got pissed, they had a right to be pissed. There was no one alive more pissed than me. Hmm. And I can tell you this, no one called me anything that I didn't call myself. So that's where I stand on it. I love the town of Philly. Great sports town. As long as you fight as hard for them as they fight for you, you'll get along good here. Yeah, I saw that uh, you once said that your years with the Phillies were the favorite three years of your baseball life. What was it about the three seasons in Philly? Was it the teammates? Was it the fans? Or, you know, the fact that you were able to get to the World Series in 93? What made you so happy here? Uh, the people. I'm a big believer in honesty. And I, I never needed smoke blowing up my ass when I sucked. If I sucked, I sucked. <laughs> when I do a good job, I just walk off the mound. But when I sucked, I don't mind hearing about it. I heard about it from my father my whole childhood. That's why I got where I got. <laughs> good deal. Well, he makes three seasons, uh, as we were saying in, uh, before the show. And it seemed like you were here a lot longer than three seasons. But in those three seasons, you pitched in 200 games, had 102 saves. Um, that's, a, that's a great run for just three seasons. Well, I only spent three, three seasons in Texas and threw in 232 games, <laughs> I like the ball. I was one of those guys that was actually pissed. I, when I first came up, I honestly believed I was supposed to pitch every single night. And I got mad if I didn't. So if I didn't pitch in a game, I threw a 50-pitch bullpen every night if I didn't pitch in a game. My rookie hold the game of 85 games my second year. But I was still not at a niche, and I, I just don't see that too very much anymore. Well, Mitch, uh, the magic number is three, I guess, because I want to ask you something else. You had three hits in your 11-year career, three for 16. And by the way, your 188 career batting average is about 50 points better than what Scott Kingley's hitting this season, but that, that's a whole other issue. Uh, your, your first hit as a Cub, if I'm not mistaken, was a home run. And, of course, your third and final hit in your career was that uh, one with the Phillies at 440 a.m., July 1993. And, first of all, I got to say, I loved your line afterwards when you said, I do some of my best work at 430 in the morning. But how often, <laughs> do, people, just, how often do people ask on, you about that hit? Oh, yeah, lots of people bring it up. It's uh, just one of those things. Uh, I worked at it. I was a closer knowing I wasn't going to get a hit, but – I used to go out and work at it and I paid guys to throw me extra BP. Hmm. I was a hitter coming out of high school. I didn't want to pitch. As far as I know, I still hold the home run record in the state of Oregon for high school. So I didn't want to pitch. I wanted to play first base, but they had other ideas for me. <laughs> well, Mitch, I have to ask you, everybody knew the wild thing. Where did Mitchie poo come from at that night? I have no idea. That was Harry's deal. <laughs> Harry would call me that. He was the only one that really – he was the one that started it. And then Dutch picked it up. And then Inky. And when it's those guys, they were my teammates. It's fine. But I don't want a whole bunch of people calling me that. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchie Poo. All right, Mitch, you said there was nothing off limits for our conversation tonight. So I have to ask you, you had issues with both Kurt Schilling and Lenny Dykstra over the years. You had that crazy WIP roast five years ago where you and Lenny did a lot of name calling, nearly came to blows, I think. How did things get so bad between you guys? Well, nothing nearly came to blows in that roast. I mean, it was just a, a nothing deal, really. Okay. It was just a, a, a stunt. And at the time, I, I was unemployed because I'd been fired from Major League Baseball Network based on by rumor blog, which I ended up having to go to court and sue, and I ended up winning. But it didn't stop them from getting me blackballed in the sport as, as a broadcaster. So I had to find something 
to do to make money. And that was one thing that made me money. I don't, I'm not a big fan of Lenny's. Lenny was, uh, I've said it a thousand times, the smartest baseball player I ever played with and the dumbest human I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> oh, well, and, and what about Schilling? Uh, you know, I guess of, of everybody, that was a good team, obviously, but uh, if anybody probably has Hall of Fame credentials at, at the end of the road, it's, it's Schilling. Uh, what do you, you think see, I don't that? believe that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to argue with you on that. I don't see him as – if they add a postseason wing to the Hall of Fame, he's a first ballot inductee. Yeah. How do you look at his 22-year career? He won 216 games in 22 years. That's not – it's a – the Hall of Fame is a body of work over a career. Jack Morris won, I believe, 254 in 18 years in the American League, facing nine hitters a night. Kurt – pitched 12 years in the National League where he only had to face eight hitters a night. So I look at it and it just doesn't compare when I look at a guy like Jack Morris. They want to bring up ERA and all that. I can tell you this for a fact. I played with a Hall of Famer and Greg Maddox that every guy that ever walked and played behind him wanted him to win. And every guy that ever played behind Kurt couldn't give a shit if he won <laughs> because he was just that kind of guy. <laughs> That's why he won in the postseason, because everyone wants to win in the postseason. They're all playing hard. Kurt, he would have been a Hall of Famer if he'd have been a better guy, a better teammate. But he was one of those guys. If the team went out there and went 20 and 142, if he had the 20 wins, that's all he'd care about. Yeah, and now he's creating things, uh, you know, politically and whatnot. So that's not helping his chances either. Yeah, best hey, of luck in your about, political career. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I want to ask you about your manager, Jim Fregosi. I know you've had a lot of respect and a lot of great things to say about Fregosi. Uh, tell me about your relationship with him. And is it true that he once asked you to cut your mullet? No, he tried. <laughs> and when he, he asked me about it, I went and dug up his baseball card and showed him how shitty he looked with the angels. <laughs> he had them pork chop sideburns. His hair was all out of control. I said, you're going to tell me to get a haircut. <laughs> uh, I know. I said, when I turned 18, I decided how long my hair would be. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Mitch, back back on that 93 team to the good guys, Dutch and Kruk and Hollins and those guys, that was a good bunch of guys, Mordini, uh, that was a good bunch of guys, and it seemed like you guys might have had a little bit of fun along the way. No, we, we had a ton of fun. That was the most fun I've ever had playing the game of baseball from at any level. When I was, we won the state championship in high school. That was fun. That 93 team was unbelievable. It was the best group of guys I'd ever been around in my career. Everybody talks about Dutch Dalton being such a great leader. Uh, how was he such a good leader? What did he do to make everybody want to, you know, help the team win? Well, he wouldn't hesitate to whip somebody's ass in that clubhouse if it needed it. And, and that's where that is missing all over the game. Where is the leadership? If you got to grab somebody by the throat to get them to do their job, grab them by the throat. It's that simple. We're here to win games. That's what Dutch was. They – Jimmy was probably my favorite manager. Him and Zim were both up there because he gave me the confidence I had in myself. That's where a closer gets his confidence is from his manager. And he let me get myself out of more jams that typical managers wouldn't. They'd panic, get somebody else in there. The only person that or, well, my walks bothered everybody but me. I never, buy, I never worried about a walk. They say there's no defense for a walk. Well, there ain't a great big defense for that fucking ball hitting the left field bleachers either. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Mitch, speaking of teammates, I wanted to ask you, you, you only had one year with him. He was at the twilight of his career. But what about Dale Murphy? You got to play one year with Murphy. What kind of guy was Murphy? Crucky was right when Crucky came out, when Murph came to the Phils and said, Mormons have to go on their missions and they decided to send Murph here to the Philly. <laughs> so Murph was a great guy. We're from the same hometown. He graduated from Wilson high school, I believe in Portland, Oregon. I grew up 12 miles South of Portland. So we're from the same area. Never meet a nicer guy. 
Hey, Mitch, I have to ask you about the, the two rule or two of the rule changes so far this year. How do you like the seven inning double headers and how do you like putting a guy on second when you're the guy that's got to go out there and get people out? That's a joke. That's an <laughs> absolute joke. I know this. I, the first thing I said, who gets the loss? <laughs> you do. I ain't taking it. <laughs> if I walk on the field and there's already a runner on second and the inning hadn't started yet, that ain't my guy. <laughs> so you can literally give up a fly ball to right. He could tag, get to third, give up another fly ball, and you got it. They're going to hang an L on you. That's ridiculous. You could face yep. three guys, give up a run, and not give up anything else and get a loss. That's wrong. Yeah. I hear you. Give you, it to what, the damn commissioner. What do you think about – how do you like them seven inning games? I'm fine with that in, the, in this COVID-shortened season. I'm fine with that. I don't have an issue with that at all. It's some of the other rule changes. One of them, I can tell you this. Manfred was testing the waters during this COVID deal because the CBA is up after next year. Mm. If the players think he ain't going to try and get every single rule he got in in COVID back in in the new CBA, they're nuts. Tony Clark's smarter than that, so I, I know he knows what's happening. But that's what he was trying to do. He ain't a baseball guy. He couldn't spell baseball. All he is is a labor lawyer. The only thing he knows about baseball is he couldn't play it. That's it. <laughs> hey, Mitch, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago when we had Chris Wheeler on that I'm actually kind of a fan now of the designated hitter. Uh, I've come around on that. What do you think about the DH for the National League permanently? No. Uh, no. I will always be a guy that believes that the nine guys that are on the field ought to be the nine guys that come to the plate. If you don't okay. want to look stupid, work at it. <laughs> there you go. I'm, I'm with you. Because, and I guess the funny thing to me, Mitch, is, and you mentioned it about yourself, uh, you know, when you were in high school, you were a hitter. You were a ball player. That's why yeah. you are what you are. And then all of a sudden you go to minor leagues, hey, you're a pitcher, and they take your bats and you never see them again. Then bring you to the big leagues and they want you to hit. Uh, you know, it's almost like going up there with your hands cuffed. Not me. I always live by the theory of swinging bat is dangerous. I think I only struck out once in my career. But wow. I was going up there looking to hit. And I had to face closers all the time. That game at 440 in the morning was up a guy that had over 600 saves in Hoffman. Yeah. But I warned the catcher if he threw me a changeup because I played with him in the San Diego organization. I said, if he throws me one changeup, I'm going to hit you right in the fucking head with this bat. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Mitch, <laughs> final question for me. Your favorite baseball movie, the obvious answer, is Major League. Is that what it is, or is it something else? Uh, yeah, Major League would be up there and Bull Durham. Bull Durham okay. because I played in that stadium. Ah. It, it was a great park in Durham. And, no, I never hit the mascot or nothing there. But that was actually <laughs> the only minor league appearance I had in the minor – or relief appearance in the minor leagues was in Durham. Hey, Mitch, before we let you go, where uh, where can people listen to your podcast? What else you have going on people can follow you that want to talk baseball? Well, I'm on Twitter. Uh, Mitch, 90, or Mitch Williams 99, I believe, is my handle. I'm not sure. It might be Mitch 99 Williams. I they think can that's find it. me. It'll be a guy roping. <laughs> but, uh, and how about your podcast? Where can they get that? On, then you can go to wildfire or, you know, go to MitchWilliams99.com. It'll give you all the instructions on where to find the podcast. It's Mitch Williams Unleashed. Yep. All right. It's wildfires doing it. Good stuff. Good Mitch. Deal. Well, Mitch, thanks for coming by, man. Great stuff. We could talk. I could talk about this stuff for hours. Well, yeah, listen Monday at 11 or Friday at 11. You'll hear more of it. Absolutely. Right. Thanks, Mitch. Good deal, Mitch. You bet, thanks guys. Take care. Take care. Appreciate it. All right.